Welcome back. Dave Isaacs here with you for jamplay.com. And in this lesson, we're going to get into something that is probably familiar to a lot of you, and that is the A minor pentatonic scale. Now, I need to say something about scales. We're going to work with quite a few scales over the course of this series. However, I wouldn't be surprised if many of you have already learned and practiced lots of scales. Some of you might know them really well, all up and down the neck. But a good number of you who are saying, yeah, that's me, might also be feeling like you still don't know how to use those scales to play a solo. That's what this course is really going to be about. So if the scale pattern is new to you, great, get it under your fingers. If it's not, then really focus on the main idea of this lesson, which is that we're not going to improvise using the entire scale. We're going to improvise using bits and pieces, little musical statements, what I like to call gestures, with lots of space in between them so you have time to think and figure out what you want to do next or not, if that's the way that you feel it. I want to start off with this scale in the open position. So that's down here on the first three frets, really first five, because we're going to end up on this high A up here. Many people learn the minor pentatonic as their first scale, but they tend to learn it up here and learn the movable shape. And I've come across players who have learned lots of movable shapes up and down and can't play a scale in open position which is kind of silly. Seems like that should be fundamental, right? A pentatonic scale is called pentatonic because it has literally five tones in it. And we'll get into the theory of it a little further down the road, but I just want to walk you through this fingering to start with. Starting with the open A, fifth string, then third fret, open D, second fret, open G. There's your five notes. One, two, three, four, five, and then we'll continue. Third string, second fret is also an A, so this is the beginning of the next cycle, the next sequence. Second fret, and then second string, first fret, third fret, open E string, third fret, once again, five notes. Listen to both octaves. And if we move up, we can include the fifth fret of the high E string. But the main thing that I want you to get from this is that you may have learned a fingering sequence, but you may not have thought about musically what's going on there. And so being clear on this sequence of two octaves, in other words, the same musical pattern twice, once higher, once lower. That's important. That gives you a level of understanding of what you're doing that you wouldn't have if you just learned, which is how a lot of people learn the minor pentatonic scale first. Now, don't worry. We'll get to that. That's coming. But right now, we're down here on the first three frets. So when I said we're not using the complete scale, what I meant is I'm going to pull two note three note, four note groups, and use simple rhythms to play those against the track. So you can follow along, this is tabbed out for you, but keep in mind, these are simply examples, they're simply ideas. Through this entire course, you are always going to be free to come up with your own variations using the same basic raw materials. In this case, it's just working off the notes of this pentatonic scale. I'm going to put the track on and we'll work through these small gestures, these small note groups that are little bits, little pieces of that two octave A minor pentatonic scale. First off, just like this. Notice what I'm doing, I'm working my way up. 
using adjacent notes of the scale and spacing things out. You might be watching this going, this is stupid simple, why are we breaking things down this much? But the answer is, we're going to mix and match these patterns. So you just had eight three note fragments there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play to the track and use those same eight fragments, but instead of playing them in the order I played them before, I'm going to mix them up. And this is the exercise that I'm going to want you to do. So here's what I mean. Sounds like music. How about a four note group now? Or another? Or another? groups again, leave some space. same idea. And another same idea. Maybe I'll mix them up. That was a four note group doubled, followed by a three note group. Think of these musical fragments as being like the three-letter words that you learned when you were in kindergarten or preschool, right? You were just learning how to talk, you were just learning how to read, and so you learn simple words first, and you learn to form simple sentences, and then those sentences become more and more complex, and eventually you learn how to speak. This is very much the same idea. And that minor pentatonic scale is definitely a fundamental piece of vocabulary. We're going to be working with it for a good bit as we proceed through this course. And I'm going to take things a step further in the next lesson and talk about how I'm choosing the fragments that I'm choosing. It's actually not completely random, so you're going to find out more about that in a little bit. But I do want to suggest that you sit and work with this backing track. And you know, if you find yourself just slipping into playing, things just start to flow, go with it, do it. But take the time to try this process, whether you work from the fragments that I've given you here or whether you come up with your own. But the idea of really distilling things down to these tiny little note groups and then choosing from a set of possibilities. And the more comfortable you get with this, the more likely you're going to be to start making up your own options. Play with it for a bit, see where it takes you, and in the next lesson, as I said, we're going to look at how you make those decisions to make things sound musical.